Uh, we're here with Kirsty Law today. Hi, Kirsty. Thanks for joining us. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, Kirsty is the reigning British Discus champion, a title she gained in 2019, which was two years after she actually decided to quit the sport. But fortunately for us, she decided to give it another go. Um, she's also 12 times Scottish champion, third on the Scottish all time list with her PB of 57.79. A Commonwealth Games finalist in 2014, she'd just gained selection for the European Throwing Cup back in March when the competition was put on hold. And we're joining her now, I think, just in front of her makeshift uh, weights gym in her back garden in Loughborough. Yes. Hello. <laughs> so um, we'll, we'll do what we've done on most of these interviews and, and start by kind of rewinding you to uh, when you first started out with athletics and I think you were, is it, you were about 13 when you first picked up the discus up in Inverness, is that right? Yep, uh, first picked up the discus when I was 13 but started at my local athletics uh, track when I was eight um, and I did everything, cross country, long jump, I ended up doing pentathlon and then um, I I was finished my events at, when I was 13 and they wanted somebody to do the discus. So I, I did it and I won it and I've, I did it ever since. Wow, so you, you won on your first attempt at the discus. I did, yeah. That's that wasn't competing for Inverness. That was for my first club, Minolta Black Isle. I don't think it's, it goes by that anymore. I think it's Ross County, but that's how long ago that was. And yeah, you were working, I think, fairly early on with Cameron Roger in Inverness. Yep. Yeah, he was my first, my first uh, proper coach in the discus year. And when you started working with Cameron, was that, um, you'd obviously made the decision that discus was for you. Was there a kind of uh, change in, in kind of pace and seriousness of the training that we do, you were doing? Or were you still young enough that it was still quite general, still quite fun? Yeah, I think, well, I absolutely hated running. So the cross, I can't remember when I gave up cross country, but um so I was happy to go to a throwing event where it involves some running, but not as much. Um, and I liked the gym side of it, the weights. And but I didn't, I didn't start weights till I was about fifteen, sixteen. But um, yeah, I think the fun element was still there for me because I didn't focus just on discus at that time. I played football for Inverness Ladies. Um, I was playing basketball then, hockey. Um, I was swimming. I was doing everything. So it wasn't until I was about 18, 17, 18, I had to make a decision because I kept either breaking an arm or twisting my ankles playing football. So I had to make a decision on what, what route I wanted to go down, football or athletics, because they were the top, the two that I was best at. And so was, it was about 18 that I made the decision. And was that the deciding factor was just that you were getting so many more injuries in football that you decided to stick with athletics? Was that the one thing that swung it? Yeah, uh, I love football, um, but they're two totally different. One's a team sport, one's a individual sport. And I think for me, I was more suited to the individual sport. So I can't, I could only blame myself for anything that went wrong. I can fall back on a team or blame the team or anything. So I think, and I think at that time I was better at discus throwing. And you, I mean, you were clearly a, a decent footballer. I think you were in the under 18s for Scotland. Yep, twice. But you, twice. You ever sit back, yep. especially when uh, the team went to the World Cup final last year? Yeah. Was there a bit of you thinking, oh, that could have been me? Um, yeah, I do. I do miss football. Because, um, as I say, at 18, I, I made the decision to go to athletics and I stopped completely. Um, when as you said before about retirement a couple of years ago, I, I joined a team down here in Loughborough where I am now, uh, Loughborough Foxes. And uh, because I missed it so much uh, to get back into it. But again, I went back to athletics and had to stop again. But yeah, I, uh, I did think, oh, that could have been me, but I've enjoyed the route I've taken. Good stuff. And so just taking you back to the, to the athletics track, then you or to the, athletic sort of path through your life. Your first big international, I think, was the Commonwealth Youth Games in 2004 in Bendigo. What Talk yeah. to us about that. How important was that as a kind of developing athlete to have that opportunity? Uh, yeah, that was amazing. Like you said, my first big thing, I think it was 17 or just turned 18. 
because it was in the December. So I think it was about 18. Um, that was amazing. It got like, especially because it was the other side of the world. Um, the, the journey, I remember them saying, they giving us all this advice about um, not trying not to sleep at this part of the journey, now sleep at this part of the journey. So you're not as jet lagged when you get there because we were competing. Um, I think it was only maybe four or five days after we got there. Um, so yeah, that was a that was a big part of my uh, uh, learning into the sport. It was that was a that was a good trip. And talking about competition, I know you've said that Glasgow twenty fourteen was quite a pivotal one for you in terms of keeping you in the sport at a time when you were maybe not that enthusiastic about staying on, but being able to compete in Glasgow and at Hamden was an incredible experience, and that was one of the things that kind of renewed your excitement for the sport. Tell us about your, your Glasgow 2014 experience. Um, the Glasgow 2014 experience was the best experience of my life. I'll, I've said it, the, the crowd, everything about it was amazing. And I'm a big football fan. So I go to Hamden a lot to watch the, the football team. So to get, for me to go onto that field and compete, was it was phenomenal. And I, I was competing the, the time that um, Ailey Child won her, um, Ailey Doyle won her um, silver medal. So they were playing the, um, the proclaimers while I was like going into the circle. So it just gives you that buzz. Definitely gave me my buzz back for um, competing. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I'm, that couldn't have happened at a better time. It happened at the right time and it gave me my love and um, excitement back for the sport and, and and coming out of that talking about your coaching setup so I think in 2015 you then went to the states and started uh, working with John Godina who, yeah uh, Olympic and world medalist a fantastic yeah. opportunity how did that come about um well we'd been out before I think it was the start of 2014 me and my training partner at the time Dan Greaves well, back training partners now. Um, but in 2014, we went out for a warm weather training camp uh, with our current coach um, at that time. Um, and me and Dan worked really well with him. Um, and then obviously 2014 happened. And then um, we, we left our current coach and Dan, and well, we, we got in touch with John to say because he said he would coach us so we said we asked him and he said yeah yeah it'd be good come out and so we spent most of our time out there in America it was the um brilliant brilliant opportunity and I'll never um never regret going out there and spending the year most of my time out there it was it was brilliant amazing op opportunity was it very different in terms of the the whole setup and the kind of sessions you were doing and the kind of coach athlete relationship was it quite a different culture yeah I mean we had a good coach athlete relationship the um training sessions seemed to double in in the time and um uh, quantity we were training um so I went from training maybe two hours a day on my training days to maybe three and a half four hours daily out there so it was nice to go out there and live like a full-time athlete for a couple of months at a time it was nice get some good work in and be in the sunshine and um be with your coach um and training partner majority of the time Brandon it was around then I think that you got your first GB vest which was going to the European team championships in Chiboxerai in Russia yeah what was it like suddenly then you know after a lot of years of work getting to get the GB vest and travel with the, the senior GB team yeah I mean I got I think my senior first senior GB vest came at the winter throws it's not a big comp but it was the winter throws I went with Goldie Sayers and Karis Pari out to Croatia I want to say maybe I can't remember but that's how long ago that was maybe 10 it was a few years before that, but yeah, that was my first big one uh, in Russia. Again, that was amazing traveling out with the team and uh, getting all the um, experiences and learning. And even you're still learning it. When, what age was I? Like 30. Um, 
so yeah that was that was brilliant I was so happy to um get my first senior vest and get the uh, the paperweight brilliant and and who else was on the team at that point who who traveled with you who was on the uh the GB team? It's Zane my current coach Zane Dukeman um I always remember Fuzz Khan um and his athlete Rob Robbie Gabraz um Louise Blur uh they were the main ones I uh I stayed with and I can't I can't remember any others really <laughs> And uh, since we're talking a lot about competition, we can't really talk about your career without talking about the Loughborough International as well. I think mm. you have been uh, more times than any other Scott. I think it's 12 times you've appeared and you were there as captain last year and won the competition. Was that uh, a good experience to be there again as captain and uh, and to, to win? Um, it seems so far away, so long ago last year. So I haven't competed really since, but uh, I love competing for my country. It, we don't get to do it enough, I don't think. So when I can pull on Scotland vest and represent my country, I will. And it's just the best feeling, apart from the Commonwealth Games, but that's every four years. But yeah, the Left Branch National is a good good chance for us all to get together as a team um, and compete for our country and uh, have fun because it's like at the start of the season. So gives you a good indicator of where you are um, and yeah lucky I, I like to, I like to compete obviously Loughborough is my home track and then um, yeah I like to compete there especially with a vest on. Great and then just returning to the, the sort of coaching so you worked with John for about a year and then yeah. decided to stop that was it it was just a good setup but not working as well as it could have done? Um, well, I think the main reason I stopped with John was because uh, I couldn't afford it anymore. It was uh, it cost uh, it cost ten thousand pounds for a year to be with John. Um, as like I say, if I if I could have done the the another year, I think I might have. But I don't I don't know I don't I don't regret anything going out there. I learned so much from John. It was amazing getting to know him and getting to know his athletes and. Uh, America, I just love America, um, but yeah, I um, that was that was the main reason. But I think uh, me staying here and uh, Zane taking me under his wing was uh, definitely the best option for me. And so you then, I think around twenty seventeen, was it? You decided that maybe it was time to retire. It was the end of twenty sixteen. Um, was that before you were working with Zane or was it Zane coming on the scene that then kind of drew you back in? It was it was before I was working with Zane. Um I was just uh, I knew I knew there was something wrong because on with, with John we used to because he lived in America we used to he used to Skype us on the iPad so um he'd watch us that way and me uh if everyone knows me I'm a happy bubbly person and I was just getting so frustrated or I don't know with my throwing I I got I started crying on the and that's, that's not like me at all but I was just getting myself so much into a, a lull and a a bad place that I just didn't want to do it anymore I'd had enough so I think I took the I took a couple of weeks off um, and Zane lived in Loughborough so he was training I knew Zane um and I just after a few weeks and stuff I started um because I was like oh I think I'm just going to retire um and I I was just working like I said to Zane can I can I come and just work in with you and he's like yeah yeah no bother and then he'd like say oh it's just I don't know mention my left arm or something um and I started to enjoy it again I don't know if it was the fact that because John was so far away um, and I wasn't ready for it or that Zane, he just, he got me, he found the love for me and discus back again because I, I, at that point, it it did take me a few months, 2017, uh, he start, we started working together, I think it was in the January of 2017 um, and it, uh, I got, it did take me a bit but I got the love back and the excitement and spark back and I, I knew that's what I wanted to do and it's literally been like that ever since. Great. 
and, and we're talking about Zayn. I don't know if we spelled out. This is Zayn Dukeman, who is himself yeah. still also a competing athlete. Was he yeah. already coaching other athletes when you started working with him, or was it that you were coaching, you were working alongside each other, and he then kind of stepped into that coaching role to help you? Yeah, he was um, working with George Armstrong, who he's still working with now. And I think some of the uni guys he was working with then. Um, but yeah, he, uh, well, I asked him if he'd uh, coach me and um, he, he obviously thankfully said yes. But um, I, I've said it before, but I wish I'd met him sooner. Well, not I, I knew him, obviously, but I wish I'd gone with him maybe although I don't regret America, but maybe it was the, a better option. We should have gone to Zane earlier, but you can't, can't look back and regret stuff. So, but yeah, he's, um, he's helped me massively. I mean, Still what, doing. What is it about the way that you're training now and being coached now that has been so helpful? Um, so as you say, Zane's still an athlete himself. Um, so I think he gets it. He gets, how athletes think, how athletes need to be. He's like, um, he doesn't uh, shy away from uh, asking for help if somebody's offering an opinion because there's a lot of um, coaches don't like other coaches butting in or anything, but Zane's not like that. He's very open-minded. Uh, he understands, he, get, he, just, he just gets everyone he works with. Uh, he's a nice guy. Uh, I think that helps as well. Like I, I can go to him for absolutely anything. I tell him everything. He's like, not just my coach, my friend. So, yeah. And I mean, looking more widely at your setup now, it's one that maybe on paper shouldn't work. So you're, um, you're working, you're not funded. So you're working part time in quite a demanding job. You're a nursing assistant yeah. in a high security mental health facility. You're doing 14 hour shifts. Yeah. Zane himself is based, I think, in Doha. So again, you're yeah. propping up the iPad in the circle to, for him to watch you. If you were to write that out, it just doesn't sound like the idea, ideal setup. And yet you're thrown probably better than you have done for years and years. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's, it's the message that it is just a matter of experimenting and patience and that eventually things, you know, try unusual things. And yeah. You never know what will work. I mean, I'm literally in the best shape I've ever been in, the best shape of my life. Um, I was ready to compete at the start of this year, but uh, obviously we can't help what happened. Um, but yeah, me and Zane and Jade uh, Lally, we've been, uh, we Skype, uh, we've been doing that since August last year, since you moved out to Doha. So everyone that is coming into this and doing all these um coaching online sessions we've been doing it since then it's just the norm to us it just he's uh he's two hours in front so he just he tells us when we can so we work around him when his because he's working out there so when he can watch us we'll we'll be there um but it's yeah it's just the norm to us my um I work my shifts my work are amazing with me they I did start full time because that was the time I was uh going to retire um but my work they've been absolutely amazing with me giving me all the time off I need to go and compete and um my managers my, my bosses they've just uh if I need a shift swap they'll do it uh they let me use the gym at work um they're very very accommodating because they want me to get there uh so yeah but yeah it's just it's just the norm to us now and me it is tiring working the 14 hour days but you just have to uh manage your time and recover and eat well and yeah so good and well we can see that it's working because you'd you'd had british titles at under 17 under 20 under 23 and then last year you finally got the senior title yeah it must have been a, a happy day when you finally got that medal around your neck yeah it was an amazing day obviously i wanted to feel further and feel better that day but i did what i needed to do on the day so yeah i was very very happy with that great and british champ, british champ. happy happy days Brilliant. And I mean, do you think it's the case you've pushed through what was obviously a, a difficult time in I don't know, your late 20s or early 30s and come out the other side? Do you think there is a tendency maybe for us? A lot of athletes will go through a rough patch. And if one yeah. of the rough patch hits slightly later in your career, it's tempting to think this is it. It's all over rather yeah. than 
something's wrong, I need to put it right and carry on. Do you think that, yeah. that and sometimes people retire a bit too early? Yeah, I mean, maybe. They, I mean, they retire when it's right for them. Um, I'm glad I didn't retire. I, would, I always remember my dad saying to me, because I said, I think this is it, I'm done. And I always remember my dad saying to me, don't have any regrets. So if you retire, it's always better to carry on and because you won't, I mean, you won't regret that. He said, just don't have any regrets in your athletics career because when you get too old, that's it, you're done. You can't go back to it. So I always remembered that. Um, and I, it definitely, I mean, Zane got me back and it definitely helps training with someone you really get on with. Like it would have been a lot harder with Zane out there and it, I was just training myself. But me and Jade Lally, we've got the, the best relationship and we just, we train together uh, all the, as much as we can. Not so much just now. We can now in the throwing out in our rugby pitch, but obviously we're gymming separately. But when everything gets back to um, normal, I think, uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be uh, a lot better. And, and, and you meant, mentioned that, well, we've talked a little bit about the Scottish champs. 12 yeah. titles you've got already and I know even uh, after the European Championships in Berlin you yeah. jumped on a train and a plane to get back and defend that title what is it you yeah. love about that competition? I mean I came back from Berlin because I was disappointed with the way I threw in Berlin so I wanted another chance to uh, throw better which I didn't do but that's a different story um, but yeah, I, I love coming back to the Scottish Champs. I'll try and make it every year if I can. It's just, I, I don't get home much. I don't get to compete in Scotland much. Um, and it's just ni nice to remember where you came from. Um, and plus I want to be a uh, Scottish number one. I don't want anyone else to have my title. So as long as I can keep doing that, I will. <laughs> right, well, we're always glad to see you there. Um... And 2020 obviously has been a tough year for a lot of athletes who are, yeah. including you, you know, working towards qualification for Tokyo at a time when a few years ago you didn't think you were going to be doing anything other than yeah. watching it, I guess. How are you coping? And I suppose particularly how has Zane helped you cope with, I mean, both the training demands of having to really change that goal, but also the kind of psychological adjustment involved in yeah. that? I mean, we've adapted, like you say, you can see my uh, gym behind me. Um, we've adapted my programme to suit what I can do. Because I, I have got, I've been very lucky in what I've been given. Um, so I have been able to still lift and do my bits, my other bits. And we've been able to use the uh, rugby field. Um, but, uh, so that's kept me sane, uh, I think. Um, but Zane, I mean, I, I was fine. I was a bit down at the start because uh, we didn't have anywhere to throw or anything like that and um and I was in such a good place I knew I was ready to throw far and then this this uh, corona hit um so obviously everything changed but we got um so I was fine and then only a couple of weeks ago um I kind of lost my I don't know, lost my way a bit because with throwing, you, you're up there and then you just lose it. Something will happen or something will change. Like I've been working on a change and uh, my distances weren't where I wanted them to be or where I had been throwing. So um, they were coming backwards. So I got myself into a little, got into my head. Uh, so Zane had to have a chat with me and uh, get me out of it. And it is hard from miles and thousands of miles away, but he, he did it. Uh, so and we're and now we're finally getting back into the track so we've been given two slots uh twice a week um which will be good to to get in with the cage and the circle so yeah it'll be fun that's that's how that starts today fantastic and um in terms of that kind of role the the coach's role in helping keep the the morale and the focus of an athlete in difficult times how mm. do you do that what what can Zane say to you that can lift you out of that? Is it uh, he did, perspective or? Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, I missed the last bit. Is it is he just kind of putting it in perspective and looking at the bigger picture or what kind of things is he saying to you that that are helpful? Yeah, because as an athlete, it's um 
you like focusing on the there and now you don't remember what you were doing last week or well this is just coming from me so what I was doing last week although I was throwing further than my PB last week maybe this week I'm not so he'll remind me what I was doing last week going back and look at your training diary um it, he'll say I'm not worried so why are you worried um and I, if he's worried that I should be worried as he just he just has this way of speaking to you um that helps motivate you back get you out of how you're uh, bad you're feeling um and we're very lucky to have Zane definitely I don't I don't think all coaches can are would be good like him especially in the number I've had I know I'm too speaking from experience <laughs> fair enough well you're down in England and I think things are a bit more opened up than they are here so you are yeah to go so that you can go and get back on the track this afternoon so we will let you go and do that and and enjoy training with that nice blue sky that you've got behind you um, yeah thank you very much for talking to us that's great yeah welcome I enjoyed it thank you <laughs>